from the air, it looks quite small, but don't let this damn wall fool you as it holds back a massive amount of water. At the bottom of the wall is a hydro power station. And that damn wall was created out of natural resources. 55 kilometers downstream, this diversion dam has turned barren country into a productive agricultural area. This is part of the Ord Irrigation Scheme, which gets its water from man-made Lake Argyle. Lake Kananurra didn't exist until this infrastructure was built. Work started in 1963. Although called a lake, it actually occupies the original route of the Ord River and until the diversion dam was completed, was dry for much of the year. Now the water level is kept constant and the lake is rich with flora and fauna. The gorges which line the lake add extra drama to the experience of cruising the lake. From the air, the root of the lake is immediately apparent, as is the ruggedness of the terrain. Because of the stable water levels in Lake Kananurra and its associated wetlands, it has well-developed fringing vegetation of grassland, rushes and woodland. The 1500 square kilometre site was designated a wetland of importance under the Ramsar Convention on the 7th of June 1990, which means that it is an internationally recognised wetland. As water levels are stable in Lake Kananurra, they have developed densely vegetated areas with aquatic plants fringed by bulrushes, grassland and savanna woodland. Since the completion of Argyle Dam, the area around Kanadara has become very rich farming land. And the Diversion Dam provides an abundance of water for agriculture. There are some great cruises along Lake Kanadara. It is a truly magnificent place. The skippers on these cruises are very knowledgeable and I was amazed by the diversity of wildlife here. The Argyle Dam Wall is impressive being 335 metres in length and 98 metres high. Lake Argyle is Western Australia's largest and Australia's second largest man-made reservoir by volume. Lake Argyle normally has a surface area of about a thousand square kilometres and it has a maximum depth of 63 metres. When you fly over the lake you can really appreciate what a huge body of water it actually is. In Australia we have the unusual habit of measuring large bodies of water as SIDARBs which is the amount of water in Sydney Harbour. In the dry season when it doesn't rain, Lake Argyle has about 18 SIDARBs. When in flood it can hold 70 SIDARBs. There's also a hydroelectric plant at the bottom of the dam wall. Flying into Kananurra, it's easy to see the irrigation channel. The water irrigates some 1,500 square kilometres of East Kimberley farmland. The town of Kananara didn't exist before 1963 
when it was built specifically for the construction of the dam. The earth fill only dam wall at Lake Argyle is the most efficient dam in Australia in terms of the ratio of the size of the dam wall to the amount of water stored. The lake is now home to 26 species of native fish and a population of freshwater crocodiles currently estimated at some 25,000. Don't worry, freshwater crocodiles only grow to about 2.5 metres and tend not to attack humans. Both the Ord River and the Bow River flow into Lake Argyle, as do many tributaries, creeks and streams. It is an absolutely sensational place, a man-made lake that has made this region of Western Australia very productive. Lakes Argyle and Kununurra are both stunning to look at and experience. One of the best times to experience them is at dusk on a typically balmy night. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel and be advised when we next publish another video. Thank you for watching.